Welcome to another tutorial video. This time around, we're going to be discussing how you might use cash flow and free cash flow in an LBO model and some of the different alternatives available when you're modeling a company. This tutorial is based on a question that came in the other day, which is as follows. I'm completing an LBO model case study. I understand there's a difference if the company uses its cash flow to issue dividends to the PE firm instead of repaying debt. But what if it just lets cash accumulate? Is that equivalent to repaying debt? So our plan for this tutorial is first to answer this question. The short answer is no, they're not equivalent. And I'll show you why they're not equivalent in Excel in a little bit. Then we'll talk about the main ways you can use cash flows in Nelbio model. And then we'll talk about how you might set up the assumptions in your model if you have an extremely time pressured case study that you have to finish in an hour or two hours or three hours. And then if you have a more open-ended extended case study where you can come up with your own assumptions and spend more time thinking through them. Let's go to why there's a difference between letting cash accumulate and repaying debt to begin with. You might think at first glance that having 100 of extra cash at the end upon exit is the same as having 100 less in debt, because at the end in an LBO model, you subtract net debt. So these should be the same. For example, if you pull up a very simple LBO model in Excel, and let's say for our ending debt balance, we reduce this from 307 to 207. Our money and money multiple is 3.1x and our internal rate of return is 25.6%. And then if we increase our cash balance to 120 rather than 20, our multiple is also 3.1x and our internal rate of return is 25.6%. So if you just plug in the numbers like that, it seems like these should be equivalent. But they're not because repaying debt reduces the interest expense in the holding period. For an example of this, if you look in this Excel file, we have a couple different treatments of free cash flow, repaying debt principal, letting cash accumulate, or issuing dividends to the sponsor. If we just let the cash accumulate right here, our interest expense is 50 million in each year because we never repay that debt balance. We never pay anything down. And so the debt balance of 500 stays the same throughout. This means that the cash flow we generate by the end will be lower than it would have been if we had actually repaid some of that debt. So we get up to 48 here, starting with 23. If we change this to number one for repaid debt principal, take a look at what happens. Our interest expense goes down to about 36 million from 50 million initially. Our free cash flow goes up from 23 million to 56 million now at the end. And at the end, our net debt balance is lower. So this is why they're not equivalent. When we repay debt, we get a money and money multiple of 2.9x and an IRR of 24%. And when we just let the cash accumulate, we get almost the same money and money multiple 2.9x, but we get a lower internal rate of return of 23.7% because of that issue with the interest expense. So what happens here is that that lower interest expense results in higher cash generation. And it really means that in almost all cases, it's better to repay debt than to let the cash accumulate. The general rule of thumb is that there will be more of a difference here when you have higher interest rates or a higher free cash flow relative to the company's debt balance. When all is said and done, it's still a pretty small difference, but just to show you an example of how it works. Let's say that we change our interest rate here to 15% rather than 10%. When we let cash accumulate, we get a 22.4% IRR. And then when we repay debt principal, we get to a 22.6% IRR. So we get a difference of 0.2%, which is actually almost the same as what we saw before. But if you were to change this and you set this to a very low interest rate, for example, say 2%, we get an IRR of 25.8%. And when we change it to let cash accumulate, the IRR is almost the same. So at least with a lower interest rate, there seems to be less of a difference when you have to decide between these two methods. Let's go to part two and talk about more generally how to use cash flow in an LBO model. The main three options are letting it accumulate and increasing the company's cash balance, paying out dividends to the financial sponsor, the private equity firm, or repaying debt. Of all of these, you're generally going to see a much bigger difference between debt pay down and dividends because of the time value of money. Money today is worth more than money tomorrow, so it's better off for the PE firm to get those dividends in year one, two, or three, rather than to let them accumulate to cash balance or let them go to debt repayment and then get the benefits of that in year five, as opposed to getting those benefits in year one, two, or three. 
if we were to rank these from lowest to highest, we would say cash accumulation is probably the one that's most likely to generate the lowest IRR, followed by debt repayment, followed by dividends. And to see that in Excel, if you go back to our file, if we just let the cash accumulate here, we get an IRR of 22.4%. If we repay debt principal, we go up to 22.6%. And if we issue dividends to the sponsor, we go up to 23%. It certainly works here. It's not a universal rule, but it is a rule of thumb, you could say. What's interesting, though, is that the MOM multiple, the money and multiple, stays the same for all of these because it's not impacted by the time value of money. And it's actually exactly the same for dividends versus cash accumulation because of our assumptions. We assume that the company generates no interest income on the cash. The MOM multiple is 2.7x, and regardless of what we change it to, it stays at about the same. It goes up slightly to 2.8x, but if you look at the decimals here, we're talking about 2.769x versus 2.742x. So they're very, very similar, even though due to rounding, it seems like you get a somewhat different result. Let's go to part three to talk about how to set up the assumptions in your model. The first point to mention here is that these scenarios are a little bit artificial. We're assuming in our very simplified model that the company can do anything it wants. It can repay as much debt principal as it wants, it can let everything accumulate to cash, or it can take all of its free cash flow and just issue it as dividends to the financial sponsor. But this is not really the case in real life. In a lot of cases, the terms of the debt state that the company has to repay a certain percentage, or sometimes that if there's a cash flow sweep, the company has to devote, say, 50% of its free cash flow to debt repayment, or 25%, or some other number. And then on the flip side, sometimes companies raise debt where they cannot repay principal at all until the very end upon exit or until the debt comes due and it matures. So these options are a bit artificial and in real life, you're not really gonna have to make this exact same set of decisions. If you have a very time pressured case study, such as one that you're given 30 minutes or an hour or three hours to do, keep it simple. Assume as much debt repayment as you can, and then just let the rest accumulate to cash. Don't even worry about this business of setting up dividends or issuing dividends to the sponsor. One of the problems with doing this is that the formulas get a little bit more complicated. You have to check for more conditions. You have to build in some type of switch to deal with the treatment of free cash flow. And then you have to issue as dividends anything that's left over after free cash flow minus cash flow used for debt repayment. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So that's fine, but if you have a very time pressured case study, you probably don't wanna bother with that. Now, if you have more time or you're on the job, it's almost always better to do something with this cash flow, to repay debt or to issue dividends than to let it sit around doing nothing. So if there's any way that you can actually use this cash flow to repay debt, you should do that as much as possible. If you go beyond a certain limit and the company can't repay debt anymore according to the terms of the debt, then you might wanna start thinking about issuing dividends. If the cash balance gets up to a high enough level early enough on in the model in say year two or three out of a five-year holding period, it's almost always gonna be better to issue some amount of dividends than to let this sit around in a cash balance. One other thing I want to note is that none of this really matters all that much. You're not gonna go from a 10% IRR into a 20% IRR just because of how you treat free cash flow in this type of model. As long as you've set up your model correctly, it's not that different to let something accumulate to cash versus repay debt with it versus issue dividends with it, especially over a shorter holding period, such as five years, three years, or even seven years. But doing this can be a good way to boost an already pretty good IRR or possibly to reduce some of the downside risk. So if you get to say a 21% IRR, you could point out that if the firm issues dividends, you might be able to take it to a 22% or 23% IRR, which makes it look a bit better in your recommendation. Ultimately though, an investment recommendation still depends a lot more on the company's growth rates, margins, and cash flows than these tricks for how you use the company's cash flow. So you can think of all of this as icing on the cake. It's good to know, but you still want to eat the whole cake, which in this case means getting the whole LBO model right, getting the exit right, getting the returns attribution right, getting the debt repayment and cash generation right, and all that. And once you have all that set up, then you might want to start building in these types of options. Let's do a recap and summary now. The short answer is that if you treat free cash flow differently in an LBO model, it's gonna produce results that are at least slightly different. Letting cash accumulate is generally gonna produce the lowest IRR, repaying debt will be better than that, and then issuing dividends, if you can do so, will be even better than that in most cases, 
Yes, there are exceptions if the company's business performance fluctuates quite a bit. For example, you could see some exceptions to this rule of thumb, but that's the general idea. In your own models and case studies, you shouldn't worry too much about these points. Set up the assumptions simply, assume as much debt repayment as you can, and then let the rest accumulate to cash if it's a time pressure case study. If you have some more time, such as a few days or a week or something like that, and the company generates a huge amount of cash and cannot possibly repay more debt, then you might wanna think about issuing some type of early dividend to account for that and to get the firm a higher internal rate of return.